There are always two sides to every argument, and you may have listened to my previous video where I talked about why Imperial is superior to the metric system. Now, I'll admit that I wanted to troll you guys a bit because this is such a heated debate that I've seen over the years, and as expected, you guys went wild in the comments telling me exactly how wrong I was. Now, let's take a look at why the metric system is actually superior to Imperial. In my last video, I talked about the origin of the metric system and how it standardized measurement across borders and oceans so that everyone agreed on a measurement no matter where they were, from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole. And this made thousands of other convoluted measuring systems obsolete. In the metric system, all measurements easily relate to each other in powers of 10, making it far easier to convert a measurement without needing to memorize some crazy numbers that make zero sense, like the fact that there's 5,280 feet in a mile. The metric system is faster, more accurate, and is based on absolutes rather on things that change from person to person, like a foot, or things that change from location to location, like a spoon. The metric system also makes it very easy to measure everything, no matter its size, from the micron to the megabyte, making it very adaptable to the modern world where we study things that are tinier than you can imagine, like quantum particles, and far more massive than you can imagine, like galactic superclusters. If you want to get sick of decimal places, try measuring a quark in inches. Temperature is also far easier to understand in metric. At zero degrees Celsius, water freezes, and at 100 degrees Celsius, water boils. It doesn't get much easier to understand than that. Now, when you start dealing with temperatures like absolute zero or negative 273 degrees Celsius, it may make more sense to switch over to Kelvin, which is preferred in many scientific circles. Either way, whether using Kelvin or Celsius, there are still exactly 100 units between water freezing and water boiling, whereas in Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. Not exactly intuitive. Another place where metric shines is in electricity. Electricity came about after both metric and imperial units were already established, so to make it easy on the world, everyone adopted the same units, the amp, the volt, the ohm, and the watt. And to get a good idea of how outdated the imperial system really is, consider that America still uses horsepower to define the output power of a motor, whereas metric simply uses kilowatts. As usual, Americans just have to be a little different, it's just the way we roll, much to the annoyance of the rest of the planet. In machining, there are two obvious places where metric beats imperial. Threads and machine tools. With metric threads, it's a lot easier to know what drill to choose for a specific thread size, and the pitch of the thread is much easier to understand as well. Tap drills in metric tend to go up in size in even increments, and the pitch is right there in the thread callout. For example, an M6 by 0.5 thread uses a 5.5 millimeter drill and has a pitch of 0.5 millimeters whereas a quarter 20 thread uses a 201 drill and has a pitch of 1 20th of an inch or 0 .050 inches. In machinery, your control may be limited to a resolution of 0 0.0001 inches or 0 0.001 millimeters. Therefore, when using metric, you can obtain better accuracy. 0 0.001 millimeters is a lot smaller than 0 0.0001 inches. Metric is so much better here that most manufacturers use metric for their machine tool, and if you want to use inch, the machine will just convert to inch after the fact to take advantage of the improved accuracy. In 1975, the U.S. passed the Metric Conversion Act, which declared metric to be the preferred measurement system of the United States. But many Americans resisted this effort from politicians to authors. During this time, there was a lot of heated debate, and people even held anti-metric parties and events. In America, people were saying that it was stupid to use some arbitrary rod located somewhere around Paris to measure things, and in France, they were saying, it's fantastic to see Americans giving so much energy to something that is not important. It's much better than watching them build nuclear bombs. In the end, comparing the two measurement systems is a lot like comparing karate to jujitsu. One isn't necessarily better than the other, it's how you use it and what you're more familiar with. It would certainly be better in the long run if everyone would use the same units so we could all stop having to endure the endless conversions needed to interact with each other in a global market. These conversions have had a lot of very exciting effects, from smashing billion dollar satellites into other planets, to blowing out threaded holes with the wrong drill. But for the time being, it doesn't look like we're all going to agree on the same system for a long time. So let me know which system you prefer in the comments and why, and I'll see you there. Thanks for listening.